Alrighty, let's get started. We have a lot to fit into this hour. So good morning, everybody. My name is Hannah Fuller. I'm a media officer with the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. Thank you for joining us this morning for a webinar on the report that was just released titled Ocean Acoustics, Education, and Expertise. You can now download a copy of the report and other supporting materials at www.nap.edu. A recording of this webinar will be available on our website shortly after it concludes. We also just dropped a link to the report in the chat so you can see it there. For those of you not familiar with the U.S. National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, we are private, nonprofit institutions that provide independent, objective analysis and advice to the U.S. to solve complex problems and inform public policy decisions related to science, technology, and medicine. For each requested study, panel members are chosen for their expertise and experience and serve pro bono to carry out the study's statement of task. The reports that result from the study represent the consensus view of the committee and must undergo external peer review before they are released, as did this report. I have the committee chair and members of the committee that wrote the report here with me today, but before they begin, I wanna go over a few reminders. Please note that this webinar is scheduled to last one hour. We'll start off with a presentation summarizing the report by the committee members, and then we'll open it up to any questions that you may have. To ask a question, just click the Q&A at the bottom of your Zoom screen and type your question. You can submit a question at any time during the presentation, and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. And with that, I'll turn it over to Caroline Bell, Program Officer in the Ocean Studies Board. Thank you, Hanna. Um, as Hannah mentioned, my name is Caroline Bell. I'm a program officer in the Ocean Studies Board of the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, and the responsible staff officer for this study. This study was a combined effort between the Ocean Studies Board and the Board on Higher Education and Workforce. And on behalf of the staff team, I'm happy to welcome everyone to the presentation today. And also, I would like to thank the Office of Naval Research for sponsoring this study. With that, I would like to turn it over to our committee chair, Jennifer mixes olds who will give the presentation. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Caroline. Uh, welcome, everybody. It's so great to see so many people logged on. Uh, my name is Jennifer mixes olds I'm from the University of New Hampshire, where I serve as the director for the Center for Acoustics Research and Education. Um, I'm also the chair of this National Academies Committee on Ocean Acoustics Education and Expertise. So for the next 30 to 35 minutes, I'm going to provide a high level overview of our key findings and recommendations, and then we'll hopefully have time for questions. So broadly throughout this presentation, I hope to convey a few take home points that I just want to start off with. First, um, careers related to ocean acoustics are vital for the national security and defense, economic and environmental sectors. Um, second, growth within these sectors requires a workforce with ocean acoustics skills um, related to technicians operating equipment on vessels to PhD researchers pushing the envelope on applications of ocean acoustics. And finally, increased support for training and education opportunities is needed to meet the demand for this growing ocean acoustics workforce. So to begin, this study, sponsored by the, Nation, the Office of Naval Research, was designed to assess both the current and future state of ocean acoustics expertise required to realize the full value of ocean acoustics knowledge and capabilities across a diversity of fields and applications. So this was the formal statement of work. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I do want to really highlight the four sections that we focused on. So first, we had an examination of ocean acoustics education currently available in the US. Um, that's depicted in the report in chapter three. Assessment of the demand for acoustic expertise now and anticipated over the next decade that composes chapter four of the report. Also in chapter four is the identification of competencies that links um, education to workforce demand. And then um, Chapter five of the report really looks at examining strategies to raise the profile of careers in ocean acoustics. And the goal in, 
in um, raising that profile of careers at Ocean Acoustics at the very end there is to recruit a very diverse workforce. So please keep that in mind as we um, go through the different chapters. And then the final chapter, chapter six in the report, really is that bridge in looking at the gaps between chapter three, what's currently offered in our education portfolio, and chapter four, the demands for the future workforce. Um, the committee was composed of eight technical experts assembled by the National Academies to address the task of work. Members of the committee represent diverse fields of ocean acoustics with experience in acoustics, bioacoustics, geophysics, oceanography, ocean engineering, and signal processing. Additionally, committee members also included um, expertise with education program management, workforce development, and represents a number of higher education institutions with acoustics and ocean acoustics programs. So to conduct our task, the committee first started by reviewing previous reports related to um, ocean acoustics education and research. Uh, this included the 1997 Lackey report titled Report of a Survey of US Academic Programs in Ocean and Underwater Acoustics. And in 2018, as part of Task Force Ocean and commissioned by um, the Office of Naval Research, the Consortium for Ocean Leadership developed a report called the State of US Ocean Scientific Research as it relates to competitive advantage for the US Navy. So these reports were both focused on, these reports both focused on naval and defense needs, but the committee found several recommendations that are still relevant today. Um, recommendations from these reports with the committee's evaluation of relevance um, can be found in tables 1-1 and 1-2 within the report. Also, the committee notes in table 6-1 which recommendations of the previous report align with those that the committee um, identified. Additionally, the committee commissioned the development, distribution, and analysis of an online survey to gather information from academia, um, workforce sectors such as government and private sector, and professional societies. The results from this survey help to inform the current state of acoustics education and expertise, as well as anticipated future workforce needs. The full survey findings can be found in Appendix B of the report. Um, finally, to augment the online survey and allow for in-depth conversation about the current and future needs of the ocean acoustics education and expertise community, um, the committee held several information gathering panels, and these are seen here. Um, they covered workforce, early career and recent graduates, higher education and training, uh, outreach, STEM education, and naval training programs. So the study of ocean acoustics is key to understanding the ocean environment. The definition the committee used is summarized here. Uh, sound is the primary modality for animals to sense their environment in the ocean because light only travels a few hundred meters under the ocean surface. Remote sensing in the ocean beyond a few hundred meters requires the use of sound and ocean, and ocean acoustics. Sound waves can travel across ocean basins and into seafloor sediments to be used to detect things from submarines to fish stocks, ocean temperature, and gas deposits under the seafloor. Ocean acoustics is the study of sound and how in the ocean and how it travels, interacts with, and is affected by its underwater surroundings. The field of ocean acoustics originated with military research and has grown to diverse applications, including underwater navigation, uh, communications, tomography, and the sensing of ocean um, temperature. And through modes of operation encompassing both active transmission and passive listening, we're able to gain a lot of information um, about the ocean. And this image was, was modified from a previous publication and really highlights the different aspects where ocean acoustics is currently being used today. And I just want to highlight a few. On the passive side, um, people are probably most familiar with listening um, to vocalizations of marine life under the biology um, sector here. What, things you may not be so familiar with is the fact that passive acoustic monitoring is now an integral part of earthquake and tsunami warnings um, for coastal communities. On the active side, tomography is really looking at ocean temperature, and we see active acoustics becoming important in um, autonomous underwater vehicle controls and communications, as well as looking at um, ocean mapping, for example, 
part of exploring oceans that we haven't had um, haven't explored yet today. So I'm going to move on to um, just a sample. This, gra this graphic is, is near and dear to my heart. The committee worked hard on this. It's the first place we've really seen where um, all of the career paths in, ocean, in the ocean acoustics community um, can encompass whatever education level um, people have. So here we've got from high school careers all the way through to PhDs on two different pathways. You can be on an, an R&D pathway on the right, um, or you can be at a sort of a technician analyst pathway on the left. Um, this military pathway in the middle is designed to show that members in the military with ocean acoustics training can both receive education at various levels and upon leaving the military, join the civilian and ocean acoustics workforce in different jobs based on training, experience, and education. We'll come back to this um, as the presentation moves on. So in chapter three, the report discusses um, existing opportunities for direct training and education related to ocean acoustics throughout academia and government, including both military and non-military and industry. So one of the things the committee really focused on before diving into analysis was trying to identify um, really what we mean and what the difference was between education and training. So education really refers to the formal degree education provide and provides content for all areas of applied acoustics, including the fundamentals of sound propagation, signal processing, scattering, and instrumentation, as well in the math and phys as well as the math and physics behind the acoustic theories and concepts. Training, on the other hand, is very specific and refers to the calibration, operation, um, maintenance, and data analysis of acoustic technology and software. Keeping those definitions in mind, um, here is a, a sort of a subset of Table 3.1 in the report and presents higher education institutions that offer programs with ocean acoustics courses, programs with ocean acoustics related course content, and programs with core acoustic courses. Um, the, pro the committee developed this table from survey results, information gathering panel information, and searches on the web of institutional websites. So the content in ocean acoustics, general acoustics, and supporting disciplines is included in the following formal degree programs um, identified by the committee. Mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, computer engineering, and civil engineering, computer science, biology, physics, aerospace engineering, oceanography, um, ocean engineering, geophysics, and marine science. However, None of these formal degree names explicit, explicitly convey knowledge or expertise specific to acoustics, um, with four exceptions. So the Pennsylvania State University, University of New Hampshire, and the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth, as well as the Naval Postgraduate School, are the only four U.S. higher education institutions offering programs with degrees or graduate certificates um, that specifically convey acoustics expertise in the diploma or certificate title. Through examination of the existing education programs in the US, the committee found that the small number of, of faculty teaching ocean acoustics related courses or mentoring grad students combined with the various home departments they reside in can result in ocean acoustics expertise being lost and not backfilled when faculty retire. Additionally, the vast number of departments where ocean acoustics content may be found varies and can, hit, can inhibit growth of the field and recognition of clear educational paths for interested students. The committee also sought to discover the types of available opportunities that allow students to apply and expand their skills in ocean acoustics. Results from the survey are displayed here. Um, the committee found that a wide range of training and internship opportunities are important to encourage and develop connections between academic programs, industry, and government agencies. Examples of existing internships and training programs can be found in the details of Chapter 3. Several professional societies provide mentorship opportunities within the ocean acoustics community. These mentoring programs are important to the professional development of the ocean acoustics communities, both through formal mentoring programs and one-on-one -on -one interactions. 
The committee examined examples of on the job training, workshops, short courses, tutorials offered outside of degree programs by institutions of higher education. Uh, learning opportunities to support the ocean acoustics workforce are increasing, but additional options and programs are needed to meet the demands of a growing workforce. So moving on to chapter four, the current and future employment landscape for workers with expertise in ocean acoustics has never included as many sectors of the economy as it does today. This expertise used to be largely considered province of the military and defense supported um, academic sectors, but it is now in demand to support public and private organizations focused on issues such as port security, renewable energy, commercial fisheries, or non-defense research. This chapter outlines types of activities and areas where ocean acoustics is found in the workforce, then reviews employment opportunities within three areas. Government, which includes federal, state, local, and military, the private sector, and then academia and research, and finally examines the state of the workforce, including the ability to meet current and future demands for ocean acoustics expertise. So during one of the information gathering panels, the, the committee found that a growing number of jobs related to ocean acoustics do not require skills gained through the completion of higher education degrees. Um, employers often need workers who can operate ocean acoustic equipment and participate in at sea field work. So expanding on the job or technical training opportunities can support this growing sector of ocean acoustics workforce. And on the right is just again a subset of the different use inspired or applied uses of ocean acoustics, ranging from aquaculture and cable laying all the way to offshore energy and carbon mitigation. Um, and chapter four really goes into the details of linking what type of competencies are required for each of these different applied uses of ocean acoustics. Another area the committee found lacking was sufficient ocean acoustics training at federal agencies engaged in regulatory activities related to ocean acoustics. Maintaining ocean acoustics expertise in regulatory positions is important for the credibility and reg, uh, of regulatory agencies and improving trust between government regulators and industry. So I'm jumping now to chapter five. So ocean acoustics is a highly interdisciplinary field at the nexus of multiple STEM disciplines and faces challenges to recruitment and retention common to those associated with the greater STEM community plus an additional challenge of lack of awareness or exposure to ocean acoustics as a field of study and career path. So chapter five provides thoughts on how to attract, recruit, and retain a diverse ocean acoustics workforce. And when we think about diversity, this image on the right puts it into a context that you may not have seen in other places. Not only are the traditional diversity um, sectors such as age or gender identity identified, but this outer circle really allows us all to really think about what we contribute to diversity within our community. So the committee relied on reviewing demographic information for the larger STEM field as a proxy for ocean acoustics and found that more granular data to encourage and support increased diversity of the field is needed. But, and importantly, the committee also should not the community should also not wait for additional demographic data to take action to recruit and retain a more diverse work, uh, workforce. So now I'm going to start highlighting recommendations. So the recommendations in this presentation are the order that they appear in the report, and they do not um, convey any priority order. Um, you'll note that each recommendation in the report follows um, a similar format where each recommendation identifies an actor or actors um, and an action of recommendation. So to address these diversity issues um, in the workforce, the committee recommends that the ocean acoustic community should increase diversity and retention through the following. Um, I'm not gonna read all the bullets, but I'm gonna highlight the first, to increase academic retention programs to promote a sense of belonging was, was highlighted as very important. Um, institutions of learning should provide more exposure to positive STEM role models and mentors across the full diversity of our community. And employers should improve the work, workplace cl climate for both women and underrepresented um, minorities by challenging 
things like cultural bias and providing leadership training, supporting work-life balance and promoting parity and equal pay. A challenge in recruiting students and professionals to meet the growing demands of the ocean acoustics workforce is the lack of awareness of the field and its career opportunities. Students may receive some exposure to acoustics in general through music programs at a K through 12 level, but generally awareness of the scientific discipline and related career opportunities is not found within the K through 12 education. So changing the national K through 12 curriculum to include ocean acoustics um, would be extremely difficult, but exposure can be introduced through extracurricular activities such as the Science for Tomorrow initiative and the National Ocean Sciences Bowl. The committee found it important to not only rely on teachers to provide information on potential career opportunities within ocean acoustics to K through 12 students, but to also engage in outreach opportunities with programs that reach um, career and guidance counselors and teachers and especially parents. Another source to target for recruitment efforts by the ocean acoustics workforce and institutions of higher learning are community college programs. A number of the U in the US offer an associate's degree in marine technology in marine technology that may contain ocean acoustics um, or related topics. Additionally, these community college programs can expand course content to include ocean acoustics content to better suit graduates for positions within the growing ocean acoustics workforce. The ocean acoustics community can also follow a great example, um, the COSI model, that's the Center for Ocean Sciences Education and Excellent, Excellence for nationally coordinated efforts to raise recognition of the field, train scientists, and education professionals and provide opportunities to integrate ocean acoustics content into the existing K through 12 curriculum. The committee recommends that federal agencies should collaborate to create programs, including centers of excellence in ocean acoustics at national or regional efforts. And this would allow for um, the raising of profile of the discipline, coordinating infrastructure and support to build capacity maximizing resources and preventing redundancy. The committee looked at a variety of outreach example programs from other STEM fields to identify best practices for ocean acoustics community to adopt and increase awareness, both increasing programs that train the ocean acoustics community how to reach potential audiences and programs that reach students, parents, educators and the public to expose them to different applications of ocean acoustics can create um, interest in the field. So shifting focus to recruitment with this recommendation, the committee found from survey results that, indus that industry's most effective strategies for recruiting were often to network at conferences and or um, employ interns or fellows. A challenge with this approach, however, is that it does not often lead to finding diverse candidates. So recruitment efforts should be increased during professional society meetings that focus on serving underrepresented communities in STEM and participation in job fairs and outreach events at minority serving institutions could also assist with recruiting efforts. Highlighting the range of career opportunities tied to ocean acoustics will raise awareness and recruit to the field. For example, fields known to many undergraduate students, such as climate science and biological sciences, have links to ocean acoustics through the use of, through, through the use of acoustic technologies for monitoring the environment that can detect the impacts of climate change. Um, the great thing about this image and this, this figure that's in the summary of the report is it shows that if anyone has an interest in the ocean, there is a place for you in the ocean acoustics community whether you have a high school degree or a PhD or anything in between. Um, and that's something I think that that message is not out there. And we hope that this report conveys that message very clearly. So the final chapter of the report presents gaps identified by the committee to be between the current ocean acoustics education and training programs found in chapter three and the current and future needs of the ocean acoustics workforce in chapter four. A full list of recommendations can be found in Table 
um, identifying potential actors and highlighting which recommendations closely follow those presented by previous reports on acoustics, education, and workforce needs. So the committee identified gaps based on an analysis of the findings presented in the chapters three through five, and we grouped these gaps according to three categories. So programmatic gaps related to the availability and applicability of education and training programs, then curriculum gaps pertain to specific ocean acoustics content in current and future programs, and then three, the awareness gaps are associated with the lack of educational awareness of career pathways and related to ocean acoustics and the value it provides to exploration, science, and society. So starting um, before jumping into the actual three categories of gaps, we did find common among all three categories is the need for increased investments in fiscal support, infrastructure, and coordination. In addition, and almost most importantly, consistently offered ocean acoustics content. A lack of support and routinely offered education, training, and outreach programs will inhibit the growth of ocean acoustics community over the next decade. So the committee identified six programmatic gaps that are captured in three recommendations. First, there is a need for credential, credentialing programs to provide employees a way to display ocean acoustic skills. Second, ocean acoustics related expertise and skills of former military service members can be harnessed more effectively when they leave the service to retain their knowledge within the ocean acoustics community. And I'm going to step aside here and just relate a personal experience recently um, at UNH, we have a graduate certificate in acoustics and recently we had a military serviceman apply who works as an acoustician within the US Navy and that application because he did not have a um, undergraduate degree didn't contain a formal um, undergraduate transcript and so that did not make it through the graduate school um, prereqs for admission however when i reached out to this specific person and encouraged them to share their military transcript that really showed that they had the prerequisite skills to be able to complete a graduate degree, especially since they were already in a job related to acoustics. So um, this is really this credentialing of military skills to carry over into the, to the um, current and future workforce is a possibility. Um, ocean, sorry, next one there. Ocean, acoust ocean acoustics experience um, is really required for a coordinated and targeted training outside of the foundational math, physics, or engineering fields in areas such as sonar and echo sounder operations for marine law enforcement that's used in search and rescue or for program that target the needs of regulatory agencies. Additionally, programs that um, bridge the quantitative and conceptual components of ocean acoustics can help catalyze the education of professionals who can meet workforce demands across the diversity of acoustics technology and applications. The interdisciplinary nature of ocean acoustics scattered across US educational institutions typically result with few researchers, educators, or students at one institution and has made it challenging to build a cohesive and inclusive community. Additionally, many non-defense government agencies employ only a few ocean acousticians. These both lead to a perception of a niche field with limited career opportunities. And then expanding experiential learning opportunities, increasing the frequency and regularity of community building programs can foster a network for ocean acousticians and increase workforce retention. And these are combined into recommendation 6.4, where ocean acoustics may be perceived as a, a dated research specialty with limited relevance to today's societal concerns. However, it remains relevant with continued need to support to maintain the necessary ocean acoustic workforce expertise related to national security today and through the next 10 years, in addition to the emerging needs in the blue sector, blue economy sector, sorry. So this particular recommendation identifies relevant federal agencies and industry to engage with senior leadership at institutions of higher education to underscore the continued and critical importance of ocean acoustic programs within their institutions to support both national security and the growing blue economy. 
Moving on to curriculum gaps, the committee identified three areas captured in two recommendations where content provided in current education programs from K through 12 through terminal PhD programs can be addressed to support the needs of the ocean acoustics workforce. So introducing students to concepts of ocean acoustics early in the K through 12 education can spark an interest in the side range of research and careers available to studying underwater sound. Ocean acoustics content is also largely absent from first through third year of four year undergraduate programs. Exposure to ocean acoustics and lower level core courses for students pursuing degrees in science, engineering, and environmental policy can influence career trajectories early. And experiential learning opportunities are critical to community recruitment and retainment through professional development. The bulleted curriculum topics highlight specific areas that are that are emerging are critical to both current and workforce needs. These are bulleted at the end of this recommendation. Um, and you can see there's a wide diversity of scientific content that the workforce identified as critical for their own industry or, or organization and the competencies that they look for in hiring employees. So increasing the opportunities such as internships that allow students to grow and apply their ocean acoustic skills was a key conclusion of the survey. Um, experiential learning programs such as internships and co-ops also provide formal connections to potential career paths within industry and government agencies. And here again, I'm highlighting the need to consistently offer these opportunities overcomes the challenges of sustaining relevant coursework and maintaining suitable instructors. And lastly, awareness gaps. The committee found four gaps relating to the lack of knowledge about ocean acoustics as a career pathway and the value that ocean acoustics provides to society. Due to the lack of acoustics and ocean sound content within the early academic curriculum, career options and pathways are often unknown. Exposure to non-academic settings such as museums or aquaria exhibits, arts and theater programs, and social media content can increase awareness of ocean sound and its value. The mismatch in perception and reality of ocean acoustic career options and education requirements leads to low recruitment in the workforce. Uh, the direct connections between climate and marine ecosystem sciences and ocean acoustics are not widely known outside the ocean acoustics community. Um, ocean acoustics technologies are playing an increasing role in supporting research in both client and ecosystem science, um, both fields that many students are interested in studying. And negative media content about ocean sound um, often outweighs public knowledge of its value to science, exploration, and society. A key challenge faced by many ocean acousticians may be its initial um, development within the military context, as well as past events in which military um, sonars have may have affected marine life, emphasizing ocean acoustics as one of the most effective means of observing and understanding marine life in the undersea environment may help change this perception. So the committee recommends that federal industry and educational organizations should invest in outreach programs to US high schools that focus on marine science and maritime career preparation. And at the end of the report in Appendix D, I believe, is a list of US high schools by region that focus on marine science or maritime career preparation. The committee recommends that federal agencies and blue economy industries should dedicate financial support to ocean acoustic education and training both within grant funded projects that couple research and educational opportunities and through separate STEM initiatives um, that could integrate ocean acoustics into into the K through 12 outreach and teacher professional development programs. And this would help to increase awareness of ocean acoustics content and career opportunities at all levels. So in summary, I hope you take away from this report the importance of the field of ocean acoustics and actions that need that provide, oh, sorry, take away the importance of the field of ocean acoustics and actions needed to provide training and educational opportunities to meet the needs of a growing workforce. The landscape of ocean acoustics has changed from its beginnings, but many recommendations of this report carry forward those addressed by previous studies of ocean acoustics education and workforce needs. 
Significant efforts have been made in many areas of ocean acoustics education, but there continues to be need for resources to ensure the workforce has the education and training necessary to meet future demands, especially related to the expanding marine technology sector, growth of the blue economy, and continued need for national um, defense and security. I'd like to leave you with um, the website so you can download the report. Uh, thank you for your attention. And um, we are joined by multiple members of the committee. So as we open it up for questions, um, I'm gonna invite those committee members to be able to contribute to the question and answer period also. So thank you. Thank you, Jen. That was a wonderful summary of the report. And um, I know it was just released at 11 o'clock Eastern time. So it's great to have your overview to get people their first look at what they'll find in the report later. Um, I'd love to remind everybody that you can ask questions using the Q&A feature at any time. We've got a few in there, so I'm going to get us started now and we'll try to fit in as many as we can in the next 25 minutes or so. Um, again, thank you to all the committee members that are joining us here today. I'm um, going to stop sharing so we can have more of a, of a discussion with faces as yeah. opposed to a slide. Sounds great. And um, I'll post the questions for all committee members. Uh, please feel free to jump in as you uh, would like to. We definitely want to make this a conversation where uh, folks can hear from all of you. So our first question is, can you speak to the importance and existence of undergraduate research opportunities in the area of acoustics? Um, I, I can jump in. So there are, we, we reviewed a lot of different material and undergraduate research opportunities typically come um, in the form of experiential learning. Those researchers that take undergraduates in their labs as part of NSF REU fellowships, for example, we have um, two in ocean acoustics at UNH this summer. Um, I'm going to let other committee members jump in for more outreach um, aspects of undergraduate. Go ahead, Gail. Yeah, I'll just jump in. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, there's a lot of, of research that shows that experiential learning, um, particularly research experiences for students majoring in STEM, is a critical recruitment tool. And it provides them with the confidence um, to pursue a graduate degree in a STEM discipline. And so I that would be the same in ocean acoustics. And I, I personally feel that it's, it's critical that students have this kind of hands-on experience uh, to entrain them into the discipline. And I'm gonna jump in and add to a really um, under-recognized aspect of ocean acoustics from an undergraduate perspective is the maritime academies. So Coast Guard Academy, for example, um, they have maritime courses where ocean acoustics content is included um, in the curriculum already. And that is that is excellent. And there's also room for improvement there to really highlight the, the career pathways and profiles of where you can go with that type of information. Um, upon graduating from a maritime academies, one of the maritime academies. So that really targets undergraduate research also to answer that question. I am going to follow up quickly with that. One of our other questions is asking about how the maritime academies were included in the analysis for this report. So um, would you or, or any of the other committee members be able to speak to, to how they were integrated into this report? So there are maritime programs, both at an undergraduate level and a high school and a high school level. There were many programs at a high school level that that really pertain to the maritime field, and those are all listed in um, Appendix D. Great, thank you. Our next question is, as part of outreach to K-12 educators, is there a recommendation to crosswalk acoustics concepts to ocean literacy principles or to more direct connections to required curriculum concepts? Absolutely. And I'm going to, I'm going to either call on Gail or Liesl um, to answer that because that, that falls right into their, their court. 
Yes, um, there have been uh, several programs over the last decade that have engaged uh, particularly high school educators and their students uh, to bring folks together, provide them content training, and then have the educators uh, work together to determine where ocean acoustics can fit within their various STEM disciplines. And um, we've had at the University of Rhode Island one of those programs, the Marine Technology for uh, Teachers and Students Project. And it was really interesting that um, the specific content related to marine um, animals and their vocalization, their sound production and reception, and also potential impacts on them fit very well into biology curricula. Um, and of course, they, there's quite a bit of content that maps to physics curricula. So that's the national science standards. But in addition, um, educators have found that ocean acoustics fits very nicely within several of the ocean literacy essential principles and fundamental concepts. Thank you. Um, our next question is, uh, introduction of acoustics in K-12 seems vital. So which entity or entities could coordinate K-12 education? Would that be state departments of education, federal? Um, did your report provide any recommendations for that? Yes. So this was a huge discussion within the committee and some of the information gathering panels. And everybody seems to agree that getting this information out to not only students, but parents sooner is, is vital to the growth of the ocean acoustics community. Um, the committee recognized that changing or inserting ocean acoustics into state or federal standards, which teachers teach to, um, would, is going to be difficult, but that including content into typical math or music or science classes that pertain to ocean acoustics is a way to integrate that information into the current curriculum. And I see Gail wants to, to speak to that also. Yeah, I, yeah. I think the question is um, also about who could coordinate that kind of integration. And um, the committee examined the na a national program, the Centers for Ocean Sciences Education Excellence that was funded by the National Science Foundation as a model that worked to integrate ocean content in general into K-12 um, education. And so we've recommended that centers of excellence for ocean acoustics be developed um, that would mo model themselves um, on the COSI model. And that model brought together ocean scientists, K through 12 educators, informal science education institutions, as well as um, large um, school districts such as San Diego Unified, LA Unified, et cetera. And Working together, all of those constituencies were able to move the needle to get ocean science not only into K-12 education classrooms, but into the national science education standards where it did not exist previously. So that model is something that we, we would like the ocean acoustics community to look at as a potential for getting ocean acoustics content into K-12 across the country. And so, oh, one other thing, sorry. And so in terms of who would coordinate that, there would need to be um, a, a hub with spokes that had to, that could be funded by federal agencies or phil philanthropic organizations, but it would need funding to have a coordinating body to make that happen. Thank you. Um, one of our other questions is, um, is there any such curriculum or project uh, in, in the field of ocean acoustics that educators um, could learn from and replicate with their students? Oh, Gail looks like she's ready to take this one on. Go ahead, Gail. I'll follow oh, up. I was mind. going to ask. I was going to ask. Actually, punt it to Lisa and um, ask her to give the example of the discovery of sound in the sea teacher professional development program as one way to um, to achieve that. 
I will do my best, but I have very little voice at the moment. Sorry, oh, I have a cold. Um, <laughs> excuse me. So I, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Gail, I can, I yeah, can take Gail, it. Would you mind? Sorry. Sure. I can take it. <laughs> um, so um, we know that educators need support to integrate materials into their classroom that are not part of their normal education. And um, we have found very, very few educators that have had co content training in their formal education in ocean acoustics. And so the Discovery of Sound in the Sea project has recently launched um, a new teacher professional development program. Um, and it's a national program, it's free, it's for middle high school, um, community college and informal science education professionals. And um, these folks um, are provided with a, a rich array of ocean acoustics content across the various disciplines. Um, part of their training requires them to uh, come up with ways to integrate the content into their daily educational activities. And um, at the end of that, they get a, a certificate and the, and the program is free to them. Um, the Office of Naval Research is funding the staff who are conducting that program at the University of Rhode Island. Does that answer your question, though? So yeah, I think I think folks are looking for examples of of programs, and so I think that yeah. was a, a perfect one. Yeah, and and this fall um, there will be another cohort of educators that are accepted into the program. So um, if you're on the the docents listservs or various other email listservs across the country, uh, look for that announcement sometime in late August for the next cohort offering. So that's perfect timing with this report release. I love it. Um, our next question is, uh, did the committee look at the exposure to ocean acoustics within the U.S. Navy training, um, such as in the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis? I'll jump in and answer that one. Yes, we actually looked at it from two perspectives. Um, U.S. Navy training um, by people enlisted and officers in the Navy. And we looked at opportunities for civilians to become involved with internships or programs within the Navy. So uh, examples of on-the-job training that we discussed is in Chapter 3 under training programs under the subheading military. Um, so there were three enlisted specialties that related to ocean acoustics that we found sonar technician surface. Um, sonar technician submarine and acoustic technician that were all for unlisted specialties, um, as well as other training programs that make their way to competencies and skills on a military service record um, and then um, internships that allow. Uh, for example, civilians to learn about naval ocean acoustics research and operation um, are also are listed in Chapter 3, things like the DOD College Acquisition Internship Program and the Naval Research Enterprise Internship Program. We also were able to speak at a uh, speak with as part of one of our um, uh, information gathering panels people from MIT Lincoln Labs that had had previously served in the military and were able to share with the committee what that education was and how it then translated to his experience in the ocean acoustics civilian workforce. Great, thanks, Jen. Um, our next question is, did the committee consider expanding K-12 education recommendations beyond just ocean acoustics to include other types of acoustics education? And was that part of the um, priorities that you considered or um, were you mostly just focused on ocean acoustics? The statement of work clearly um, targeted ocean acoustics. So that was our primary focus. But the committee also acknowledged that there are many supporting disciplines related to ocean acoustics, which does include general acoustics, physics and math concepts and background. So in that um, from that perspective, yes, general acoustics was considered one of the supporting disciplines of ocean acoustics um, that can be um, 
included within the sort of the perception of this report and extended to acoustics in general, as well as supporting disciplines such as signal processing, um, for example. I'll just add from looking at <clears throat> the question that I think they were also wondering if we considered how um, maybe the scope would be too narrow for K through 12. Um, if we went like straight to ocean acoustics and there were definitely discussions on and, and Gail or Liesl can probably jump in on this um, about how uh, in fact providing the specific ocean acoustics at the earlier levels would be beneficial. Um, so yeah, I don't know if Gail maybe wants to add something on that front too. Well, um, just that we realize that the first exposure to anything acoustics related is through students' music classes. That's where they start to hear some related acoustics ter terminology and that we could capitalize on that. But um, in terms of integrating a more broad, more broad acoustics content, that, that was really beyond our scope of work. And in fact, we know from projects that we've conducted that ocean acoustics doesn't need to need to be made more broadly because it really does tie into a lot of STEM curricula and as well as mathematics. Yeah, I'll just, I'll try to um, layer on that response and just say, I think that also just due to just what Gail said, the interdisciplinary nature, I think it's important to, it, it more becomes the awareness factor. And if teachers are aware of these issues, they can easily integrate a lab, uh, some sort of activity to make the students aware that this is a thing. <laughs> I mean, there's so many students that go through into their graduate, undergraduate level who don't realize that this is a um, career opportunity, let alone an education opportunity. And um, thank you, thank you, Liesl. Thanks for fighting through that cold of yours. Um, <laughs> My, uh, our next question is talks about how um, marine bioacoustics is this really important intersection of biology and physics. And um, there's often uh, people that are really conversant in biology or really conversant in physics, but sometimes not both. And um, the question asks, you know, how did the committee uh, look at this schism between um, the, the people who are really interested and in, conversant in bio and really conversant in physics? So we did look at that and that actually um, there's text related to sort of our our findings in chapter six. Uh, bioacoustics was one of the future and current and future needs that were identified that the ocean acoustics community is the workforce requires and that that ability to speak both languages is important and that is highlighted both in chapter five and in chapter six, where ocean acoustics content in undergraduate or graduate courses that are not acoustic based could integrate into, for example, um, biology courses to really highlight the need of ocean acoustics in marine biology and start to introduce some of those concepts, challenges and vocabulary for those students to be able to seek ocean acoustics opportunities out at a more quantitative level. And we even looked at it from the opposite direction. So including some of the challenges in marine bioacoustics as examples in higher level math, physics um, courses in co the College of, Colleges of Engineering and, and Physics so that more technically minded people understand what some of the challenges are in the biology realm and then can start to be exposed to and assimilate some of that vocabulary for a common vocabulary to talk between two different um, interests, I would say. Jen. We only have five more minutes here, so I want to invite all of our committee members, especially those of uh, you that we haven't heard as much from today. Um, so the report just came out about 55 minutes ago. Uh, a lot of people haven't gotten a chance to really dig into it. 
Um, and so I want to invite all of you to share, you know, if there was something that you really found surprising while you were working on this report or as folks are logging off of this webinar and, and heading into diving into the report more, um, if there's anything that you really want to make sure that they are are focused on or, or really take away from this webinar and from the report. So um, if, if our, our committee members here just want to popcorn around and, and add any thoughts that you have in our final minutes, that would be fantastic. I'll go last and let all the other committee members share their, their take home message first. Great. Is anybody feeling brave and wants to go first? Preston. I just want to thank the committee and the chair for all the hard work in this and the attendees at this meeting today. And uh, one thing I learned was that we have a great community and uh, it was really um, wonderful to see and learn about parts of it that I didn't know about, even though having been a part of it for 25 years. So uh, I think it'll be great to continue to grow it. And I look forward to seeing that growth in the future. I'll just add to that, that I think we hope that it comes through in the report that there's a lot of enthusiasm for um, to kind of keep pushing forward the field. So we hope that in the findings and in the recommendations that comes across, um, I think there's a lot of optimism on where it can go. So. Yeah, I'll add to that. Uh, also, very nice working with everybody and um, has been a very interesting, I guess, learning experience also for myself. Uh, I think that one thing that comes through at least in my mind right now is that uh, it takes a village to raise a child, right? But I think we are trying to like raise a community from the community. And, and I think that interdisciplinary part of the ocean acoustics really shows up as we dig into the topic. And uh, I think some of the participants sort of ask questions about this, right? The more that we can sort of reach across disciplines, uh, that will be vital for the ocean acoustics field. Uh, I would agree, like, you know, second, third, fourth, whatever this is now, um, the, the transdisciplinary nature of, of this community and the needs are, are great and the application needs. It's not just PhDs that we need. We need so many different education levels and, and skill sets and abilities to really bolster this community and make it as great as it, it is, as it is and can be in the future. Yeah, and I, I'll answer Hannah's question about something surprising um, that I learned, and that was how much training uh, the military, specifically the Navy, or especially the Navy folks get um, in this discipline. And that was something I had no idea about. I mean, obviously we know they're sonar operators and whatnot, but the training is much more extensive than most of us, I think, realized. Um, and the other thing that I would like to leave folks with is how much interest there is in this field. Um, when we developed the uh, Discovery of Sound in the Sea website, our program manager at the Office of Naval Research said, what's your metric for success? What, will, what would you think the site would be successful in achieving you know, visitorship wise? And we said, oh, you know, maybe 10,000 hits a year. Um, and we said that very ambitiously. Well, there are years that we've had 13 million hits in that year, and it's regularly over 10 million. And when we have a webinar, a docents webinar, we regularly get over a thousand people to register for the webinar. So take heart. There are lots of people out there that are interested in sound underwater. Excellent. And then um, my, the thing I learned that was most surprising to me was that the workforce is demanding um, marine techs with the ability to calibrate, operate, and maintain acoustic technology. I think that that message was loud and clear, and it was not a message I had heard before this committee. And one thing that I want to leave um, the audience with is that there are some of the recommendations that are really low hanging fruit with no or minimal cost where we can make improvements advancements innovations 
now. And so, for example, there's a recommendation that encourages federal agencies and industry to seek out and interact with university leadership to advocate for our field and how important it is that it is included in university programs and curriculum due to its need and its demand within the workforce across the board. So as you go through and digest the recommendations of the report, um, there are there are recommendations on different fronts from awareness to curriculum to programmatic and there are there are things that we can do now at low or no cost. Other than maybe just attention and effort and i'm looking forward to people acting on those. Fantastic. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Thanks to our participants, um, our staff, and especially uh, this fantastic group of committee members who served on our panel. So um, that's all the time that we have today. Um, after you exit this webinar, you'll be redirected to our report page. So with that, one more thank you to our speakers and thank you all for joining us. Have a great rest of your Tuesday.